Facebook and mute lines. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God this morning. Yes, God's going to make a miracle. Hallelujah. He'll redeem our soul. God's going to make a miracle. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to the God and Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. And we praise you for all your blessings. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord. And we just thank you for being that kind of God. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you with all that is within us. Because you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. You, you are an awesome God, a wonderful God, a great God. And we just praise your holy name. You're so holy and wonderful. We ask you now, Lord, as we get ready to go into this Sunday school lesson, open up our hearts and our minds to your word, dear Heavenly Father. Do heart surgery on us, dear Lord, that we might have a new heart in you, dear Lord, that we might walk like you want us to walk and talk like you want us to talk and love like you want us to love, dear Heavenly Father. We, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Bless this technology on the conference call. Bless the technology on Facebook Live. Bless this ministry, the God in Light ministry. Bless the Heavenly Father that we might be not just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, uh, many of you have seen my Facebook posting of my nephew, Miles Davis, uh, going into heart surgery last night. Please continue to pray. He's out of heart surgery. Hallelujah. And everything went well with the heart, heart transplant. Um, and now they are um, working on, um, you know, getting his strength back up so that he can uh, go and have the kidney transplant. And I praise God for, for all that he's doing. I thank each of you for praying for my nephew. Uh, he's just, I believe, 23 years old. This is his second heart transplant. And, you know, God is just just making a way out of no way with him. And the surgeons and all those at the hospital are doing an awesome and great job. And I just praise God for them and what they have been doing. Amen. Let us get into our lesson this morning. Um, um, our lesson this morning comes from um, the minor prophet Joel, Joel, the minor prophet Joel. Um, uh, if you're looking for Joel in your Bible, get there. We're going to be in the second chapter. Joel comes after Hosea and right before Amos. So, so look into your Bible, grab your Bible, and we're going to look at Joel. Now, now the Sunday school lesson, uh, uh, they selected several verses uh, verses 12, 13, 18, and 19, and then 28 to, to 32 uh, to deal with Job. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading at uh, verse 12 of Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2 starting at verse 12. And I'm, I'm just going to read all the way down to 18, uh, I mean to 19. And then uh, I'm going to skip over and then go over to 28 and read 28 all the way over to 32. So Joel, Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, for those that are still looking for it, you know, flipping through your Bible, like I said, it's after, it's after uh, uh, Hosea and before Amos. So Joel is one of those minor prophets, hallelujah. Let's begin reading now. I'm reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says this in Joel chapter 2, uh, starting at verse 12. Now therefore, say, says the Lord, turn to me with, your, with all your heart, with 
fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. He knows if he will, he knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord. Say, yeah. Make sure I read that right. Let me agree. And he relents from doing harm. Who knows? There you go. That's how it says. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a bless, blessing behind him, a grain offering or a, or a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpets in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babies, let the bridegroom go out from his chambers and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priest who ministers to the Lord weep between the porches and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nation should rule over them. Why? Should they say among the people, where is their God? Verse 18. Then the Lord will be zealous for his people and he pities his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil and, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Now let's skip down to verse 28. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And it came to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my maid servants, on my men servants, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the earth, in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillows of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant, when a remnant whom called, who the Lord calls. Among the remnant who the Lord calls. Amen, amen. Um, this lesson title is, is it's God's love restores. Hallelujah. God's love restores. And our key verse, our key verse comes from verse 13. And verse 13 says this. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, Great and of great kindness, and he re, and he relents from doing. He relents, excuse me, from doing harm. Now the, that's that's the New King James. The 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 mess, the the the, the, the uh, regular King James, the Old King James says this: and rend your heart and not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, repenteth him of the evil. This, this, this text, this text is, 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 is helping us to understand God looks at our heart, our heart. He, 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 he's not looking on our outside appearance or what we are wearing and all of that kind of stuff. He wants us to turn from him, return from sin to him because he is kind and merciful, 
patient and love us greatly. And so, if we understand this, we, we can grab a hold of everything that's in this text. Because this is one of those texts that, man, oh man, it, it, it'll blow you. It's like, man, wow. We, 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 oh Lord, look at all this stuff going on. Oh, I'm scared. Yeah, if you're on the wrong side of the Lord, the wrong side of the Lord, you ought to be scared. But if you know, if you know the Lord and you trust him as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to be scared because you know God as kind and merciful, patient, and you know his love and how much he loves us. So my keys for kids today is that there are consequences of sin, but the Lord wants to restore us. He loves us that much. We, we know that there are consequences in every action that we do. We, 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 we can choose whatever we want to choose, do whatever we want to do, but we can never choose the consequences. And so consequences of sin, they, they have their own life. You know, the, the old saying is, if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. We have to be careful of what we choose. Our, our lesson aims for the deep people who want to say, well, I, I've been to a deep Bible study and all of that. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> the learning facts. To explore what motivates people to repent and seek restoration. The biblical principles we're going to deal with is to learn the difference between false repentance and true repentance. Oh yeah. And then the daily application is to seek restored relationships in personal and community life as well as restored relationships with God. You, you got to understand this is not about a religion. This is all about a relationship. And, and, and I don't know if your someone has ever broke your heart or ever hurt you or did something so bad that you had a hard time forgiving them. Somewhere along the line, in order for you to forgive that person, you had to decide in your heart that you were going to forgive them. And then not only did you decide in your heart that you were going to forgive them, you, 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 you gave them that forgiveness. And then eventually that person came back and said they were sorry. And then you guys were restored back into a relationship. Well, that, that, that works the same way with God. God. God knows we didn't sin and fallen short of his glory. And, 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 and he's already forgiven us in his heart. He's just, he's just waiting for us to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I repent that we can restore our relationship with him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That we can restore our relationship with him. In our culture, in our culture today, our, our culture is unfortunately defined by unrepentance. We see it every day on our news and, and, and people just say, you know, deal with it. You know, people lie in our face. Public figures are, 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 are not living up to the standard of God's word. We see pride, arrogance, and, and lying going on everywhere. And, and, and then when they get caught in their lies, they, 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 they send out their public relations people who, who are great spin doctors, and, and they spin the lie in such a way that, 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 that when they get through spinning it, it almost seems like the lie is the truth. Moral and ethical failures don't, don't happen so often that we are no longer shocked or even surprised. It's, it's like, it's our, that's just what we expect. If anything does surprise us, it's when people just come straight out and admit their guilt and, and, and have genuine repentance. That's a shock today in public life it, it is it, it is it, it is that kind of situation that kind of culture that with this increasing uh indifference that we have the, uh, 
to accountability and, and for misdeeds. It's, 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 it's a culture of, of, of defiance and unrepentance. We are dismissed as being judgmental. You just judging folks. If we show how somebody is out of the realm of God and his word and his way. So just like that was going on, that's going on now, that same thing was going on during Joel's time in the Old Testament. The culture had just gotten to the point where it was just so bad with no accountability that, that, that the Old Testament prophet responded to this blazing act of sin going around with simple words. Repent or die. The judgment of wrongdoing. The consequences was that was not of the human prophet, but it was the judgment of the almighty God. God wants us to repent. And so when we look at this text, this minor prophet, Job, his name means the Lord is God. He's called a minor prophet not because of what he said is minor. It's minor because the book is real small compared to the major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. But the content of what he said is just as important as the major prophets. And so the backdrop, somebody said, I wish somebody just holler on Facebook teach because I know I'm teaching this thing. The backdrop <laughs> of, 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 of this book is that God was seeing his chosen people continue to commit these abominable sins. So, he saw that they were never going to repent unless he moved for them to repent. And he said, I'm tired of it. Okay, you tell them, repent or die. And if they don't repent, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. You know, I, I remember as a kid, when I did something wrong, I did it once. I said, all right, now, I told you now. You did it again. They say, well, I'm going to show you. And yeah, they showed me it was that belt. You just yeah, sat there. I ain't going to do it no more. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make sure you ain't going to do it no more. Hallelujah. So what God did, he sent locusts. And locusts infestated the whole land of Jerusalem and the surrounding area. And locusts are like grasshoppers that that but they go in a big swarm with each other and, and they and they and they multiply rapidly and when they descend on on a land they eat up everything all of the crops all of the trees and all of the vegetation such devastation automatically leads to famine and with starvation coming it, it, it takes a great toll on the humans and the animals and and, and, and God uses these locusts as instruments of divine judgment on several occasions in the Bible. And so, the prophet Joel connected this horrible description of locust plagues 
with the nearness of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide in it, he says in chapter 2, verse 11. The question was a warning with an obvious answer. The day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? And the answer is, no one can stand that day. It's futile to resist the judgment and wrath of God. But there is another answer. Hallelujah. I know I'm a Star Trek fan and they had this group called the Borg and they said resistance is futile. The Borg was going to take you over. And, and when we are living in our sins and doing whatever we want to do and when we want to do it and God comes and gives punishment because the consequences of our sins deserve punishment, it's futile to resist it. You, 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 you must give up. You just, you, you got to submit. And part of that submitting is repenting. And the wonderful thing about repenting is that you have a God that is loving, merciful, gracious, and ready to forgive you. Because he's already forgiven you. He just wants you and I to repent. Oh, hallelujah. So let's look at verses 12. Verse 12. The outline, I didn't even talk about it. Verse outline is, is repentance, verses 12 and 13 of Joel chapter 2. Then we go to rebuilding, verses, verses 18 and 19. And then we go to the revelation restoration. And that's, that's verses 28 to 32. So let's look at, look at, 20, at, at verses 12 and 13 of, of Joel chapter 2. And we're going to look at this repentance this is, this is where God's people turn back to him. Listen to it. This time I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Listen to what it says. This is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your heart. Come with fasting and weeping and mourning. Don't tear your clothes in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God for he is merciful and compassionate slow to get angry filled with unfailing love he's eager to relent and not punish oh hallelujah we have to turn towards him he is ready to forgive us he's ready question is, are we ready to turn away from our wicked ways? Are we ready to repent of the things that we do? He's waiting. Are you ready? Aren't you tired of dealing with the consequences? See, now, for me, if I was preaching this in the jail, I ain't got no problem talking to the folks in the jail because the folks in the jail be like, oh, yeah, Pastor, mm -hmm, I'm, I, I don't like these consequences. I'm locked up in this jail. I can't go nowhere. I got to smell all this. Got to listen up. I'm ready to repent because they're living in the consequences of their sin. But we who are out in the world, who walk in the streets, we, we, we think we're getting away with stuff. Oh, no. God's eye. Sees everything from the beginning to the end. He knows what we're doing. And, he, and I don't care how much you whitewash yourself on the outside. How much you look good on the outside. Dressed in your nice clothes. God ain't looking at your outside clothes. He's looking at your heart. And so you might be one of those people that go around and say, well, well, I don't drink and I don't steal and I don't cuss. I don't do drugs. I don't do this and I don't do that. But in your heart, God is looking for his love. He's looking for his mercy. He's looking for his grace. 
You say, well, well, no, Pastor, I, 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 I ain't got none of that mess in my heart. I got that good stuff in my heart. I give to the poor. I take care of this person. I take care of that person. Are you doing it by the power of the Holy Spirit? Is that in your heart? And that's what God, is the power of the Holy Spirit working in your heart. Is the Holy Spirit, are you really the temple of the Holy Spirit? Oh, I'm going somewhere. That's why I started right there. That's what God is looking for in your heart. In your heart. That's what God is looking for in your heart. So he says to him, the prophet Joel says, look, rend your heart, not your garment. In other words, take your way of life up. Just let it go. Change your heart. Come and return to God. Because he's gracious and he's merciful and he's slow to anger and great in kindness. If I had time, I would talk about a little bit more on this. But, but the best way I could illustrate this is, 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 is uh, the, the, pro, the, the Jesus uh, parable on, on, on uh, the prodigal son. On the prodigal son. When he came to himself, he went back to his father's house. And as he got to his father's house, his father saw him a long way off. The son had in his mind, oh God, oh father, if you just let me be a servant in your house. I, and, and the father saw him a long way off and ran and grabbed him by the neck because that which was lost was now found. And he was so happy that his son returned. The father had been sitting there waiting and waiting. Waiting and waiting for his son to come back home. I say to you, God is waiting for you to return to him. Just like the prodigal son. Return to his father and his father was waiting on him. God is waiting on you. Let's go to the next part of our lesson. So that's God's people turning back to him. That's, that's repentance. The next part of our lesson is rebuilding. And that's God turns back to his people. Oh, hallelujah. God turns back to his people. When we turn towards him, he turns back towards us. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, listen to the restoration. Listen to the rebuilding. That God is doing it. And, and you know. And because I'm skipping over a whole lot of verses. If You know the, the, the verse 15 is that one. That's a wonderful verse. When he starts talking about. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Oh that's a whole lot of sermon and message right there. Blow the trumpet. Tell everybody. Come on. Let's worship the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's consecrate ourselves with fasting. And if we do that, that's us turning towards God. And God will turn towards us. Listen to verses 18 and 19. Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. The, the New Living Translation reads like this. Then the Lord will pity his people and jealously guard the honor of his land. The Lord will reply, look, I am sending you grain and new wine and olive oil enough to, to satisfy your needs. You will no longer be an object of mockery among the surrounding nations. God is going to rebuild the land. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. I will. That's what the Lord told us. He's ready to restore us. I, 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 I could go and say America, but I, I, I'm not just one of those Patriotic American Christians that only look at 
America. I'm saying to the world, repent. Humble yourself. Seek the Lord's face. Turn from your wicked ways and he will restore the land. He will rebuild the land. He will rebuild the land. But what people don't understand, we can't do this as just a nation or a group of people. This thing starts one person at a time. And the one person that needs to repent and be rebuilt in order that the world or the nation might be restored is the one you look in the mirror at every morning. It starts with you. It starts with me. This is a personal relationship. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So that says to me, I'm responsible for making sure I'm right. In a right relationship with God. If I'm in a right relationship with God, my relationship with God will be infectious to someone else having a right relationship with God. And that someone else will be infectious and they'll infect someone else with to have a right relationship with God. And after a while, all of us will be with a right relationship with God, and then that's when the land is restored. People will start treating each other right. People will start stop they'll stop abusing one another, misusing one another, and mistreating one another. Oh yeah, you say, oh, oh Pastor Mark, that's that's a utopia kind of mindset. But 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 I believe what the Word of God says. Now, some people, when they look at this text, they talk about, well, yes, the last time and, and God's going to destroy everything and everything going to hell in a handbasket. I don't believe the people of God are going to hell in a handbasket because we've repented. And he will rebuild us individually and collectively. And he will restore us. My final point today. is revelation restoration. And this revelation restoration starts at verse 28. And it's basically just telling us who, whoever turns to God will be saved from all of this calamity that will come. Listen to the text. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation, verse 28. Then, after doing all these things, that's after all this rebuilding he's doing, he says, I will pour out my spirit upon my people. Your sons and Daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn red before the great and terrible day of the Lord's arrival. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some of the mountains, for some of the mountains of Zion in Jerusalem will escape just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. We're living in the last days. This passage of scripture, especially verses 28 and 29, are repeated again in, in Acts chapter 2, 
when it's repeated in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. I believe it is um, um, Peter who's speaking at this point. It's after the Holy Spirit had been issued in and he came with power and on the day of Pentecost and people thought that they were drunk. And Peter told them, no, 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 we, we're not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters, and, and your shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions. Your, old, your, your, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And my servants, and he goes on, I'll pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. In the Old Testament, it says, it shall come to pass after words. In the New Testament, it says that this, it shall come to pass in the last days. There's a difference. Last days and afterwards from the different texts. This is to say, this time has now come. We're living in the last days. And God has poured out his spirit. On all flesh. We who have received. The Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he pours out his spirit on us and fills us that we might prophesy and that we might dream dreams and that we might do signs and wonders. And why, why are we doing this? We're doing this to, that somebody might glorify the Lord and see the works that we're doing for him and see his good works that he's doing through us and become saved by calling on the name of the Lord. That they might accept him and be a part of this new army of believers, this remnant of believers who are spreading the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. Oh, hallelujah. And when we do this, when the gospel has been preached everywhere by the power of the Holy Spirit, the good news of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior has been preached everywhere, I believe that that will be the day when God says, okay, it's time for everybody to come home. And those that don't 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 know don't know me and the pardon of their sins, who who refuse to repent after hearing the good news, you're going to hell in a handbasket. But those of you who accept me, that's what God is saying. I'm not saying it. The word says, if I be lifted up, Jesus said, I'll draw all men unto me. We're gonna lift up the name of Jesus. By the power of his Holy Spirit. And when we do that. People are going to be drawn to him. And come to him for salvation. But there are going to be those that won't. But that's your choice. And, and I have to say this as I get ready to close. If you don't choose. Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've already made a choice. So I encourage you to choose Christ now. In conclusion, God corrects us when we're wrong because he loves us. He doesn't correct us because he hates us. 
He corrects us because he loves us. Just like our parents, God also wants us to turn to him when we do wrong, when we sin. God is quick to forgive us and slow to get angry. Aren't you glad we have a God like that? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please restore us where we're broken. Love us when we're unlovable. Rescue us, God. Rescue us. When we are lost, our way. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, before I end the recording, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation. Because there's someone that is listening to this. and You're going, man. I want to, I want to, I want to be saved. I, I want to be saved. I want to, I want the Holy Spirit to fall fresh on me. I want God to pour out his, his spirit on me. I, I want to dream dreams because I'm old. I'm an old man. I, 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 I'm a young man. I want to have visions. Pop the spirit on me, God. And we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. And I believe if you pray this prayer, truly believe it in your heart, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you're on Facebook with us, we're going to close out the Facebook session and then we're going to go over to the conference call where we're going to open up the lines for any questions or any comments or any prayer concerns if you want us to pray with you pray for you. The conference call number is 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Facebook, let you know, be a blessing and be blessed.